from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the Southern Oregon Television Program of the Year and the Best Education Show for 2017. I am producer and host John Letts. Ramping Up Your English is an instructional support program for intermediate level English learners. Now, if you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and you want to reach higher levels of English proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs and get you closer to your goal. Ramping Up Your English is for English learners from all language backgrounds and for people of all ages. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Native Americans. This is segment one of episode 83. Let's begin segment one with some language work. In our last episode, we listened to some stories that gave us insights into the attitudes and beliefs of some Native American groups. We heard the remainder of the creation story that the Cherokee people have, and we enjoyed a story written for children about the first part of a journey taken by a family in the country of the Pitt River Indians in Northern California. We'll hear more of their story from Indian tales. We'll hear many stories in this unit, but right now we'll roll up our sleeves and work with the language we use to tell of events in the past. Now, our last episode included the fascinating discovery of objects left behind thousands of years ago in Cougar Mountain Cave in South Central Oregon, objects dated at 13,500 years ago. These objects tell us something about the people that used that cave such a long time ago. In a pre another previous episode, we learned to use the past perfect tense of verbs to tell of events, actions, and situations in the past in relation to other events, actions, and situations in the past. So today we're going to use the present perfect tense, that of verbs, to communicate the actions in the past that continue into the present or actions and events that happen more than once. First, let's do a quick review of the past perfect tense. Now we use the helping verb had. We paired the helping verb had with the past participle as seen in this example. People from Asia had crossed the land bridge. Now here are some sample sentences using the past perfect tense. People from Asia had crossed the Bering Land Bridge before ocean levels rose. Ocean levels had risen when ice, the Ice Age ended, and many Americans had hunted megafauna before those animals became extinct. Some early Americans had populated America before the Clovis culture. Early Americans had found new food sources after the extinction of America's megafauna. Now, the present perfect is another way of telling about events situations and actions from the past, but this time we use the present tense of the verb have as a helping verb, along with the past participle of the verb we're using to tell about an action, event, or situation that started in the past and is still taking place or that has occurred several times. Now here are some examples of using the present perfect tense. Hold on a second. Did I do that right? Native Americans? Yeah. Okay, so Native Americans have adapted to many changes in the climate. They have found ways to survive despite serious challenges. And tribes have often moved to new areas due to climate, environmental change, or conflict. Most Native Americans have developed deep connections to the land on which they live. Most Native groups have learned to respect the animals, plants, and other elements of their environment. Some Native Americans have built large cities in numerous parts 
of North America. Now, in order to get comfortable with the present perfect verb tense, I recommend doing some homework. Think of things you started doing in the past and continue to do. Also think of things you've done several times. Practice using the present perfect tense using the helping verb have with the verb that names your action in the list of past participles. In many cases, that will be the same as the simple past tense. You could say, for example, I have gone to school for many years. I have cooked breakfast every day this week. I have visited a museum. Now, you can also change the subject and do the same thing. You have gone to school for many years, or we have visited a museum. Now, practice like this will make the use of present perfect tense verbs easier and less intimidating. Now, there is one thing. The helping verb have changes to has when using the third person singular form of the subject. That would be for the words it, he or she, or the name of a person. An example would be, Mary has always gone to church on Sundays. Now don't worry about the grammar labels. It's more important to get your ideas across when relating events from the past or events that recur. Uh, now terms such as perfect and participle and such things can be confusing and they are not worthy of your focus. The important thing is that you use the forms of verbs that best get across the ideas that you want to communicate. Beyond that, recommended practice, don't focus too much on the verb tenses as such. The main way we learn a language is through patterning. Our brains are great at picking up language patterns, and after a time, this all becomes more natural. You won't be thinking about verb tenses, you'll be thinking about what you want to tell someone and your words will come out correctly because they'll just sound right to you. So listen and read. That's how you'll pick up the patterns you'll then use when you speak and write. Now, let's learn more about the past that we're learning to describe. While we've already learned about the first Americans through discoveries in Oregon, there were discoveries in the past that convinced many experts that the first Americans arrived around 12,000 years ago, the Clovis people. Now, while these people are no longer believed to be the earliest migrants to America, it's still important to learn about them. Professor Roberto Valdez in New Mexico produced a great presentation about the Clovis culture and other Paleo-Americans.